I'm Tamara and today we are going to be sewing six different items that you can easily make as baby gifts. Now you don't have to sew all six of these items but if you want to make three of them and put them together I think that they would make a wonderful baby gift. The first project is going to be these adorable little bunny ear teethers. Now something to mention about all of these projects is I have a free PDF download in the description below and in that PDF are going to be all of the measurements that you need for these projects. There's going to be free patterns so that you can cut out these ears the right size. And one more very important thing that you need to know, you need to pre-wash your fabric. Because different fabrics shrink at different rates, you really need to be pre-washing all of your items because we are mixing fabrics together. All right, I think that's all I have to say. Let's jump on into this tutorial. After choosing the fabric that you want for this project. Then make sure that you have velcro or snaps, some wooden rings that are baby friendly, preferably organic and untreated, and of course download the free patterns which I will have linked in the description below. To sew these adorable bunny ears you will need some cotton fabric as well as some softer fabric like the Sherpa fabric I'm using here. Take your cotton fabric and fold it in half, then take the pattern and lay it so that the straight edge of the pattern is laying along that fold. Pin it in place and then cut all the way around. Then take your cotton piece of fabric and lay it right side down onto your backing fabric. So they will be laying right sides together. Pin it in place and then you will sew a quarter inch seam allowance around the entire thing, making sure to leave between two to three inches of an opening that you will use to turn the entire project right side out. Once you've sewn that quarter inch seam allowance around the entire project, you can trim away all of the excess fabric. Now make sure just to leave a little bit extra at your two to three inch opening. Trim away all the rest of that excess fabric and trim even a little bit more at both of the points. This allows your bunny ears to have a nice point once it's turned right side out. Then you will turn your project right side out. I like to use a chopstick to just gently push out those two points before taking it over to my iron and giving it a nice press. When you are pressing make sure you fold in those flaps from the opening and pin it shut. Then you'll take it back to your sewing machine and you will sew a scant quarter inch seam allowance around the entire project that will close up that opening as well. Now a scant quarter inch is just a little bit shy of a quarter inch seam allowance. Then it's time to loop your bunny ears around your organic baby safe wooden ring. This next item is going to be a two in one. I'll walk you through the steps together because it's just two different size bibs. I've got a baby bib and I've got a toddler bib and on the toddler bib I just add a little flap so that you have a bit of a food catcher. So the first thing you will do is you will cut out your pattern piece, tape it together, and then fold your cotton piece of fabric. That way you can lay your bibs edge along that folded edge, pin it in place, and then you can cut the front of your bib out. And if you were doing the toddler bib you will want to to cut out a piece of cotton fabric that measures six inches by nine inches. And then what you'll do is you will take your flap, fold it in half so the wrong sides are facing in, and then you will lay it so that the raw edge of your flap is lined up along the bottom of your bib. Pin it in place and then trim the excess fabric away. The fabric for the back of the bib should be an absorbent fabric, so I do recommend using this Sherpa fabric that I'm using here, or you could use a terry cloth fabric and that would be a very nice fabric for the back of a bib as well. What you'll do is you will lay the backing fabric right side face up and then lay your bib fabric right side face down on top of that. Pin it in place and you will sew a half inch seam allowance around the entire thing leaving a three inch opening on the bottom of the baby bib if you are not doing one of those food catchers on it. And if you are doing a food catcher then leave that three inch opening on the side of the bib because then when you're turning it right side out you're not struggling with the extra fabric that could be in the way if you leave that three inch opening on the bottom. Then take your time and trim away all of the excess 
fabric. The less fabric that there is, especially on the curves, the nicer it will look when you've turned it right side out. Make sure you do leave a little extra fabric where your opening is because it'll just make it easier to fold that fabric in and seal that hole shut later on. Then turn your project right side out. Use your chopstick to just push out those edges. Bring it to your iron. Give it a nice press folding those flaps inwards, pin across that open edge, and then sew a quarter inch seam allowance around the entire thing. And now you can add your snaps or Velcro. Before we get into the vital Velcro and snap information that you need to know, I just wanna ask you, do you sew baby items? And if you do, what are your favorite items to sew? Please leave me a comment down below. I love to hear what you guys are all sewing. And if you love beginner sewing tutorials, please hit that subscribe button so you don't lose me on YouTube. All right, let's get back to the Velcro and snap information that I really think you need to know. If you're new to sewing, I don't recommend the snaps quite yet. Velcro will be just fine. But the one thing you need to know about Velcro is that when you sew into Velcro, you want to be using Velcro that does not have a sticky back. If it has a sticky back, it'll just gum up your needle. So make sure you're buying the correct Velcro. I will link to some in the description down below. And then also make sure that the rough side of the Velcro, the side where the hooks are, is being attached faced away from the baby's neck. And then the soft loops of the Velcro can be placed on the side that will be facing towards the baby's neck. That way the baby is still comfortable wearing the bib. If you're interested in adding snaps to your projects, I will have a few different kits linked in the description down below. And if you're really serious about wanting to add snaps to lots of different projects, then I actually recommend just jumping right on in to the cam snap system, which I will also link in the description down below. You will need snaps that are male and female, and then you will need claws to attach these snaps to your project. So this particular clamp that I have here has a rounded edge and a flat edge. And on the flat edge, I will lay my claw with the pointy bits poking upwards, and then I will lay my female bits on the other side with the backing pointed upwards, and then I will clamp it on either side of my fabric, squeezing as tight as I possibly can. The cam snap system is nice because you don't have to use your own hand strength to make sure that your snaps stay in place, but this works just as well. And then on the opposite side, you will need the male snap and you will still add the claw inside your gripper. The male snap, you have to make sure that the portion that is sticking out actually lays into your clamp, not out of your clamp. And then you will squeeze that as tight as you possibly can as well. And you have attached your snaps. I do like to add two snaps to my bibs. That way the bib has a little bit more flexibility with its sizing. This next baby gift is the burp cloth. And I do like to gift this with the bunny ears. I think it makes a beautiful set. So you will need to cut out one piece of cotton fabric and one piece of thicker fabric like Sherpa or terry cloth at eight inches by 18 inches. Then lay them right sides together. Grab yourself a cup or anything circular so that you can trace on four corners just use any marking pen. It doesn't even have to be a water soluble one. You just need something to draw that curve on all four corners, then cut away that excess fabric. This is an optional step. You could easily have the pointed corners on your burp cloth, but I do think this makes it look just a little bit more professional. And then pin around the entire outer edge before sewing a half inch seam allowance around the entire project making sure to leave a three inch opening to be able to turn your project right side out. Next, cut away the excess fabric, especially on all four corners before turning your project right side out. Then just grab yourself something pointy like a chopstick to push out all of those edges 
gently of course, before bringing it to your iron and giving it a nice press. Also making sure that those flaps are folded in, clip them in place, and then sew a quarter inch seam allowance around the entire project. I do like to use extra clips just to hold everything in place while I'm sewing around this burp cloth. Now this next baby project is probably my favorite of all of them. I just think it looks so pretty with the cotton lace. This is a small lovey blanket. You will cut out two pieces of fabric cut at 12 inches by 12 inches and then you will need enough cotton lace to go around all four edges. You will then lay both pieces of fabric right sides together and just like the burp cloth we are going to draw a curve on all four corners and trim the excess fabric away. This once again is an optional step but with the added lace this will actually make it a little bit easier to sew around later on. Then take one of your two pieces of fabric and lay your lace around the entire outer edge, pinning it in place. When you get to the two ends and you have them neatly lined up, have them overlap each other by about a quarter of an inch. Take that overlap to your sewing machine and just sew a zigzag stitch across your lace. That way you're holding it together nicely. Then finish pinning it in place and you can sew a basting stitch around the entire project at about a quarter of an inch just to hold your lace in place. I did skip this step and you can too if you are comfortable sewing all of these layers together without that. Now at some point before or after the basting stitch you can also take this to your iron and give that lace a quick press that way it lays flat and out of the way Way of your sewing needle. Now take your second piece of fabric, lay it right side face down, pin it in place, and you will sew a half inch seam allowance around the entire outer edge, leaving yourself a three inch gap to be able to turn your project right side out. Before turning your project right side out, trim away all of the excess fabric, making sure that you leave yourself a little bit of extra fabric at that opening. Then turn your project right side out, pushing those edges Edges out using something like a chopstick. Bring it on over to your iron and give it a nice press. Pin the opening in place making sure that the lace is lined up neatly between those flaps and then you will sew a quarter inch seam allowance around that outer edge and you have yourself a beautiful little lovey blanket. Now this next project is the only baby project that I made without Sherpa fabric. The reason for this is I find the Sherpa fabric is a little bit too thick for a baby bandana. So what I used was a waffle print fabric. Another great fabric for this project is a jersey t-shirt fabric. It just makes the bandana a little bit more flexible, which is a little bit more comfortable for the baby and they soak up drool quite nicely. So take the pattern piece and lay it along the folded edge of your cotton fabric, pin it and then cut out your first pattern piece. Now you can cut out both your front and back fabric using that same method, but because we're working with more flexible loose fabric, I actually find it easier to just take my first cutout pattern piece, lay it right sides together on top of my backing fabric, and then I'll just use my rotary cutter and my ruler to cut around those straight edges. Make sure both pattern pieces are right sides together, pin around the entire thing, and then sew a half inch seam allowance making sure that you leave a three inch opening somewhere on your drool bandana so that you'll be able to turn it right side out. I like to make sure that this opening is in a spot that will end up at the back of the drool bib. Now you'll trim away all of your excess fabric that is near all three points. Then turn your project right side out, push out all three points before bringing it to your iron and giving it a nice press, making sure that you press that open edge inwards, pin across it, and sew a quarter inch seam allowance around the entire drool bib. And then just add some Velcro or snaps in the same way that I described during the bib portion of this tutorial. 
and you've got yourself a really adorable drool bandana. If you enjoyed these six baby items, I highly recommend that you sew a baby blanket to go with it. I have an array of different baby blankets that you can sew to add to these items as a baby gift. I will have all of those tutorials linked in the description down below. I hope that you will find one that you enjoy sewing. All right, I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye for now.